Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Today on Grantham, we have a very important question. That question is, can a air rifle be as powerful as a 22 rifle? Uh, probably not. Today, we're gonna find out. Pushing boundaries, as always, on Grantham with eco-friendly guns. But before we get into that, we of course have to talk about the sponsors. The biggest sponsor of the channel is the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. We cannot thank them enough. They absolutely rock. And of course, who can we not forget, Micah? Primary Arms, and they uh, make optics deep inside the mines of Rohan. I would say Moria. Rohan is also okay. Is that because we're in Rohan right now? Correct. Fair enough. Primary Arms, big thank you to them. They make awesome optics at a great price and they absolutely rock. And of course, unlike the camera that this is filmed on, the TV that you're watching this on, AAC Ammunition is made in the US of A. We cannot thank them enough for sponsoring the ammo. Obviously, they don't make uh, air gun ammo. However, they do sponsor all of our other ammo. So a big thank you to them. And of course, Savior Equipment. If you're looking to have a bag that has a multicam pattern, specifically multicam black, that you want to make your personality even though it doesn't work anywhere, then you can use Savior Equipment. They also make really awesome bags, to be honest, right? You, we love them. I use them every day. They're very good bags. But without further ado, talk is cheap. Ammunition is actually not that expensive at all, so let's go, let's get into it. Pretty neat and very quiet, and actually not a firearm at all. In fact, you can get these delivered directly to your house. Air rifles are a very interesting concept, especially as we get into really high grade air rifles like the one we're looking at right here. They deliver a lot of power and they're fairly economical in use and they're extremely quiet. In fact, because they're not regulated as a firearm, the moderators, everything that goes into this uh, can be shipped directly to your door. And air rifles have a proud history of going back through the Lewis and Clark expeditions all the way up through the Napoleonic era with many different militaries fielding them to some extent or another. But I'm not gonna take the wind out of the sails of our very special guest. So come on in here and let's uh, have you talk a little bit about your rifles here. Nice, thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. Will you uh, introduce yourself to my audience? They've never seen you before. Hi, I'm Kevin Skipper. I'm the director of sales for FX Outdoors. Well, can you tell me a little bit about this rifle? How did it come about? What, what are we looking at here? So how this particular rifle came about is we started using air rifles in 22 NRL and PRS matches. Will you explain what NRL and PRS matches are? Yeah, so they're, they're uh, rifle competitions. So it's long range rifle competitions typically. Um, and they're different stages. So this rifle was uh, created specifically so that it could fit inside of any of the obstacles that they make you shoot from or anything like nice. that. So it's actually a beautiful thing because we can control how much air goes through a valve where controlling the rate at which gunpowder burns mm -hmm. is not quite as easy. So we get very, very consistent velocities. So we shoot a lot more accurately. Interesting, so you're, you're telling me that the amount of air that you're pushing the projectile with can be measured so precisely that you're actually, um, you know, because when, when you measure like a round, when you're hand loading around, you're putting in grains of gunpowder. Sure. You can actually be more precise than that with air, with the technologies that we currently have. Yes, uh, exponentially more precise. When, like when we were setting this one up, the extreme, yeah. sp the extreme spread was three. <laughs> can you explain what the typical extreme spread on a... Uh, what extreme spread yeah, can you explain that? Okay. So the extreme spread is the, the difference between your highest and lowest velocities in a string of shots. So um, we had velocities that the difference was three feet per second. And typically, like if we're looking at M855 out of like a 55, uh, you know, a 556 five, rifle, you're looking at extreme spread on even military well rounds. Well over 20. Oh, I've seen 50 to 60. Absolutely. Um, that's very uh, common. And with hand loaded ammunition, um, five and six is considered very good. Three is psychotic. So, three. <laughs> oh, in this particular case, yes, three. I mean, I've seen, I've run 16 round sets where the extreme spread was zero and how I oh. actually unplugged the chronograph. How interesting, <laughs> how, how interesting. <laughs> can you show us the ammunition for it and everything? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so can you explain to us what the ammunition looks like for this particular rifle? 
And the great thing about these is these are gyroscopically stabilized like any other rifle round. Whereas the old style Diablo style pellets, kind of like a badminton shuttlecock. Yeah. And it's drag stabilized. So it's bleeding off energy to stabilize it. So because of these particular pellets or rounds better yet, we're getting uh, ballistic coefficients at around 1.16. Which is exceptional considering yeah. you know you start getting into uh, like the pellets and things like that the Diablo style you're in like point four. I had a pellet gun growing up. Yep. I was lucky to make shots past like fifteen. Those old, yep. uh, they were like the point one seven seven cal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They had the had the little cobra on the side. <laughs> yeah, I shot my cousin with one. So we That's like illegal. To say um, how fast are these slugs traveling? These are traveling at uh, 983 feet per second within plus or three a couple. Oh, so subsonic. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why, can, can it be made to break the sound barrier? It absolutely can. The problem with it breaking the sound barrier is you have to go back through the sound barrier, which yeah. is that magical stuff that happens called transonic. So Let, let's shoot it here. All right. Now the question is, do I have one loaded? Let's find out. <laughs> Are they giving you the crash course yet? Oh yeah, yeah, I got it. So I'm gonna pull back on the charging handle, push it forward, we have safety right here. And uh, we'll take our first shot here at about 50 right here. It's very satisfying. That's uh, psychotically quiet. Oh, just over it. <laughs> That's actually really fun. That's ridiculous. Okay, that one's a, a tougher one out there. Uh, let's see if I can get it. That felt really just chef's kiss. <laughs> that felt really good. That felt super good. Um, this thing is extremely consistent and accurate, and it uh, obviously zero recoil and zero sound. We it, should group it. We should group, Let's it. group it. Let's group it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to group this. Um, these are made for 22 competitions. We do have crazy wind, but uh, you know what? That's uh, 22 man dealt with it, so I'm pretty sure I can. Too soon? That's a pretty, that's a pretty small group, dude. So we have our group right here. Uh, high wind. I definitely pulled that guy right there, but uh, I would say pretty good group. Fine. Yeah, it's all right. For the wind, <laughs> that was pretty the wind good. was blowing like crazy. Full that, value. That thing is crazy consistent. So we got an inch dot right here for uh, scale. Um, so we're looking at, uh, I would say with that wind, just over an inch. But uh, if I was a better shot and we had no wind, I would say well under an inch for sure. Yeah, the wind was absolutely hellacious. So it's uh, it's it's uh, it's our it's the mountains. Stormbreaker. The Stormbreaker right there, the big one. Oh, okay. Cool. We call it Stormbreaker. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't care. Wow, oh, awesome. wow cool. <laughs> All right, we have this thing cranked up to uh, a pretty high velocity. We're going to go ahead and we're going to chrono it and see, uh, see what kind of speeds we're getting here. So we'll do that and then we'll shoot ballistic gel after. You ready? Yep. <laughs> 10.35. 10.35? Nice. Jesus. 10.35? Okay, we are gonna fire into uh, ballistic gelatin. Uh, this is the approximate damage that I'm gonna be doing to a whistle pig, which I hate. Alan, Alan, <laughs> ah, here we go. Oh, I could see that. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah kind of gross sounding actually. <laughs> Not bad at all, about halfway through the ballistic gel. Yeah. That's all that I need to kill a whistle pig. Um, in other news, this would also really hurt if it hit your skull. This is a, not a, a, a you know, the uh, self-defense weapon of choice, but with the correct placement, I think, we, I think we have some good stuff happen. If you come take a look, we did, it looks like we got some initial expansion at the uh, entry point right there, and then it began to tumble, and then it broke apart completely at the end where it, uh, where it ended right there. So a solid performance. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, quote unquote longer range shooting. We're gonna do 160 on this target straight out there. And then we have a target down in the ravine over there. That's about 300. Um, it is very windy, but uh, you know, uh, there can be miracles when you believe. This is actually part of the uh, Dirty Civilian, um, uh, you know, mobile uh, dirt bike task force. Oh, let's go. 
that was a good wind hold, but we got it, 300, what's up? That was 300 yards of the BB gun. Men fear me, women avert their eyes. I walk alone on this barren earth, 3.45 million dead whistle pigs, marmots. That's what you had me start recording. <laughs> yes. That's action. All right, Micah, competition. We're gonna be firing at uh, those four targets right there. So we have the one on the left, going to the base of the hill, mid hill, and then far. And I think that goes out to about 225. So uh, yeah, we're gonna see who's the better BB, BB wars. Shooter. BB. BB wars. <laughs> BB wars, dude. All right, go. You gotta, you gotta give me enough. All right, shooter, are you ready? Yeah. Stand by. Mm -hmm. Up. So Mike, I was definitely on a holding left on those targets. The wind was blowing pretty good. Yeah, so it's left to right right now. So I was left edge pretty much all the way. Um, up until the top, I was about half a target off left. Okay. Um, holding about four on the hill and then um, about six on so top of the hill. The further it goes out, the further the left it goes. Incredible, more yeah. time in flight. <laughs> Micah will now be uh, going and uh, probably beating me. He's a pretty spicy well, shooter. No, I had a red rider when I was a kid. And I feel like this is like the adult version of that, maybe. Shooter, are you ready? Yeah. Stand by. Beep. Attack. Ah! Oh. Go left. Impact. Oh, right. that drop. Yeah. Impact. Come on, baby! Come on! You got some hella wind, dude. Hold like half target left. Come on! Oh, it's blowing my barricade! Oh, I'm got that desperate. <laughs> I, dang it! I declare myself the winner. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. Hey, get down on knee. Michael Jones. Yeah. I dubbed the air gun master Grand Rift, this is so stupid. <laughs> so we've done a lot of shooting, uh, pretty fun. We have a terribly windy day today, which is terrible for 22 caliber rounds that are light. But it did pretty awesome. I bet without wind, we probably would have hit 500. Would have been definitely doable, but uh, we are now suffering the fate of 22 man, which is we flew too close to the Idaho and sun and we are dying in the wind. But it's a super fun gun. We were easily able to make hits out to 300. Uh, really fun, no recoil. This is, um, I know you guys have a couple different models. Do you want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how this is set up, how it works, um, all, that, all that goodness and about some of the other models that you guys have? Okay, yeah, so this is the competition version of our gun. So it's literally made to shoot through one stage of a PRS or NRL match. So the small tank's only gonna get you about 13 or so shots, which is perfect for that. But the beauty in this gun is the over barrel plenum. So pressurizing this area is gonna control any barrel whip that there may be, but it's gonna give a lot of gas. And then it's just like any other firearm, the amount of volume of air you get through is going to be increased. So this is a larger volume of air with this design design so it can push the rounds a little bit faster. Um, we do have models though that will do essentially what this will. They're just not as sleek in this area because okay. the bottle's in the front. Yeah. Uh, and it's our absolute workhorse. It's called the uh, Impact M3. Is that what, the, what your buddy was uh, killing all the all the birds with? Yes. Yeah. Well, they rats of the sky, man. It's a pigeon, by the way. Yes, they are. <laughs> um, however, it's going to be able to do almost exactly the same thing. It's just not as sleek in the front, which is why people would go with this rifle only if they're competing. It's going to give you a lot larger shot volume up into the, depending on caliber, close to 100 shots on a fill. Okay, and now I'm tracking. So we have a 22 caliber here, but you also have um, 30 caliber um, yes. projectiles as well. So that's for, uh, you said that people take like, like uh, hogs with them and uh, not not the 30 the oh. thir we have 35 caliber ah, even 35. so uh, yes and that is good medicine for anything uh, in north you know in the south america so like whitetail hogs coyotes i mean even the 30 cal is good for coyotes wonderful now uh, so on the left side if you could rotate this rifle around here i'll, I'll hold it for you for one yeah. sec mike if you want to get 
kind of uh, zoomed in. Can you explain to everybody what all this stuff is right here? It looks like I'm um, like driving a race car or okay. something. So these are gonna be your pressure gauges. So this is gonna tell you what the pressure is in the plenum and then the, the bottom one's gonna tell you what the pressure is in the tank back here. And you can okay. see we're actually a little bit low. Uh, and then this is actually is gonna just tune. You can literally adjust every single aspect of this gun from how hard the hammer is hitting the valve oh, wow. to, I mean, all the way through what pressure you're setting, which gives us a real big advantage over anything in the 22 LR world, because unless you have a reloading bench, at the competition you're shooting, you're not going to be able to compete with this rifle just because of how much you can manipulate it on site to your current conditions. You can't beat pure fresh air. Not the Idaho variety. <laughs> I gotta stop. <laughs> uh, so that this is a part of that as well? Power wheel. Okay, power wheel? That's what it's called, right? Yep. Okay, just double so power, power wheel? Yep. What's, what, like, what kind of power? So that's gonna control how, how fast or how hot the round is essentially. Okay, and then uh, here, let's pop out that mag really quick if you wanna grab that little guy out. Um, so right here we have the feeding mechanism. Um, it's very smooth, very smooth. You can see it just pushes that projectile right into the barrel right there. Um, and then uh, it, you wanna show the magazine really quickly. And they're fairly, can you take it apart so they can see how they're loaded? You just rotate, and once you put the first round in, it locks itself and it rotates on its own, 18 rounds in 22. Very cool. Um, and I notice you guys um, have safety same side because long range shooting, all that, all that goodness for people who don't understand. Um, a, a really comfortable rifle, um, just no recoil, no noise. Um, a very, a very, it'd be, it'd be a really nice rifle for somebody who hasn't shot before to, to get hands on time with because, like, you could really train marksmanship fundamentals for not a whole lot of. Cost. So, like, how much is how much is do the projectiles cost? Um, you know, what are we looking at there? So that's the thing with air gun ownership. It's the reverse of traditional rifle ownership because the bulk of the cost is in the beginning, yeah. and then you're not going to spend much money on air and ammo. So a um, a, a thing of slugs for it, a ten of slugs, a hundred slugs is going to run you about sixteen bucks. Uh, once you buy the tank, you got air, air's free, right? Especially the Idaho variety. Air is, for now, it's free. At least it better stay that way. Well, this is a, a really sick rifle. Um, I know I'm impressed, especially with the power that this guy is delivering. Um, just overall, a, a very cool design. I can't thank you enough for coming out here, man. That's awesome. Thank you for showing my audience all this. Um, the biggest thing, guys, is um, as cool as rifles like this are, uh, get training on them, right? This is an excellent tool to train marksmanship, to take small game and to do all that fun stuff. So get out there, train, have a good time with the boys. This is 100% a really good time with the boys. Or if you're uh, if you're a competition shooter, this is a wonderful, for wonderful kids, rifle. Man. Yeah, or, protection. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna certainly take my kids out shooting this thing because that is super awesome. Um, now we usually end with uh, dad advice. So of course you're gonna have to give my audience a little bit of dad advice. So. You can do anything you want on your last day. There, there you go. <laughs>